Good morning, folks. The aftershocks in the Solomon Islands continue. Santa Cruz had two big shakes yesterday. The first downgraded from 7.0 to 6.8, and then just four hours later, we had another big aftershock, also a seven-pointer. The area just won't quit, and if we look at the buoys, this one is still having tiny deviations, but one up in Alaska is still showing ridiculous readings from 70 to over 100 foot swings in short order, with no quakes reported or other buoy deviations. I'm voting for data error. Taking a look again at the planets, this is one reason the quake watch is still enduring. A party of planets in the house of the rising sun and the moon just pulled into the driveway. I'm going to turn the atmosphere back on and send the sun on its way because people have been asking where to spot ice on. First, you need a fairly good scope right now, but when the sun sets, Jupiter rules from atop the sky and Orion is easily spotted between him and Sirius, the other brightest star in the post-sunset sky. Looking up to Procyon, Pollux, which will be directly atop Orion's head, and Ding, there's Comet Ison. Those in the southern hemisphere will need to look a little bit more northeast in the sky rather than southeast here. Good article on how Earth can swing from very, very hot to very, very cold in a short amount of time and how that can happen. We also have a follow-up to yesterday's story on the low water levels in the Great Lakes. Red high pressure, more mild weather. The lows in northern Australia, however, will bring tropical rains and storms. Perth and western Australia will be very hot tomorrow. Europe, you got two lows, and while the northwest low is more powerful, driving air mass and moisture, the real precipitation threat is on the east leading edge of the southern low, where it will be mostly snow as you get much north of Greece. Sorry to be a homer the last few days, but the USA weather simply been worse this week. Nemo shot up the coastline, smacked into New England. It is not over. But Nemo's got company in the rearview mirror, already bringing emergency conditions from the west coast through the Rockies, and set to start making tornadoes tonight and tomorrow. It's been days of calling this out. Texas, there are no excuses to be caught off guard. Real quickly, why is western Canada so much warmer than eastern Canada today? Well, this is Nemo over here on the east. It is still pulling counterclockwise down from the far north on the west side. You can kind of see that on the wind map. Meanwhile, out west, the same counterclockwise motion has the leading east edge bringing warmer moist air up the coastline and heating it up. But it'll also bring precipitation when the moisture hits colder, drier air. We showed the planets already. The other reason the quake watch indoors is that the coronal holes are still largely geo-effective from an umbral field opening perspective and potentially for solar wind impact. Tough to tell if it was a coronal hole stream or a tiny CME from this expected filament eruption, but the solar wind did see a peak around the end of the day yesterday. It's more visible here on the three-day solar wind data. We took some moderate disturbance, had some matching inductions, and the tiniest plasma penetration. A tiny sea flare on the sun was actually a hydro flare and solar tsunami. There is a sunspot group that is stuck right in the middle of that electric violence and actually has some magnetic mixing potential in the center. This is where the polarities are meeting, but I wouldn't hold my breath for flares. Earth's energetic flux has calmed slightly. There are plasma filaments posing eruption threat on the sun, and the quake watch ends in a few days. Hopefully the large quakes will end with it. Eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.